All right, guys, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Monday, August 24th. So we have basically just about another week of August. Theme of the day, market breath strong today as shift to value. Uh, this was one of the really kind of, you know, things that I was kind of worried about going into this week. Uh, if you heard some of my videos towards the end of last week, I was concerned about market breadth. Um, you could see on the bottom left, we do have like our own gauge of, of, of market breadth. And whenever it's green like this, I like to say minty green. So we talked about in one of the um, member weekend videos that either one of two things was going to happen, right? Either market breadth was going to continue to get weaker and it was going to be a bigger divergence for the price of you know what what's was basically going on in S and P and the and the advanced decline line, which was you know looking like it was potentially breaking down a bit. Um, so that was the that was the one uh, you know scenario that could have taken place. Um, the other one, of course, is that breath could kind of catch up a little bit with price. Right, we've kind of seen that lagging for. A lot of this year where market breath has been kind of lagging behind keep in mind this won't update till like later this evening uh, Bloomberg doesn't update these things till later but it's so we so we got the latter right which is breath kind of catching up to price a little bit so that's good right that's basically what we needed to see we needed to see also I would say the small caps participate a little bit um, they were really lagging um, also from a, from a value growth standpoint as well right we saw growth really outperform last week and again right we, we what we want is in, in my opinion too this doesn't this isn't a you know 100 percent certain science but um as investing is but we wanted to see where's where's my there we go but we wanted to see value kind of catch up a little bit, right? We don't want to see narrow leadership, right? I think that becomes unhealthy for the market. There could be market leaders, you know, in relative strength, that's fine. But but it's more of a healthy market once you once you kind of see that um, that it's not just the same stocks, you know. And also, I would add to that that it's pretty healthy to see, you know, the market grind higher and just different stocks kind of get ro rotated into. That's really what a, a really nice bull market is. So uh, that did flip around. I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the other, trying to multitask here and it's at the end of the day, but you could see value actually um, outperform here a little bit. And, and interesting on the small cap side, uh, value stocks did not, did not, were not as weak, uh, small cap versus large cap. And that other, uh, chart that I showed you, the large cap value made it made basically a new low or got to a got to the previous low, and um, you know looked a bit weaker. Here you could see that this is actually you know made made a, a little bit of a higher low there. So it'll be interesting. So if we look at today's top performers for the day, and uh, through the indices, you know. At one, just right around three o'clock, the VIX was actually up for the day. So, you know, a lot of things kind of went right today uh, because I don't like to see the VIX go up with the uh, when the S and P is up. But that actually we ended down. Um, you know, you could see for the you know this was right around three o'clock that the VIX was up two percent. So, so we got that to kind of come in at the end of the day and and overall pretty good. Best performers, you can see I've got the Dow highlighted there. Uh, up 1.4 percent for the day. Again, small caps leading a little bit. Remember, remember what performance was last week. I think there's a tendency for people to, some traders on Twitter, to have a tendency to forget. Remember what the performance was last week. It, you know, it was really, really strong for the queues, right? If we bring this up from last week. Do, 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 do. Right, uh, Qs. We finished the week last week. Qs were up 3.6 percent, and small caps were down 1.6. So, right, that's not healthy. We we need to see you know that kind of flipped around a little bit, right? And that's also like if you're continuing to press the Qs and growth names after they're up that big, right? You have to think a little bit logically. You have to think a little bit realistically that there's going to be a breath from time to time, right? They're not going to go straight up like a hockey stick. At least we hope not, right? We don't want to see a blow off top. So these things are quite normal, 
right? For for to you know to see some of the growth names, you know, kind of move back in a little bit, get a little bit tired, and then there's a rotation into some of the under owned things, right? So the banks were the big performers, oil, um, oil and gas names, uh, both OIH as well as XOP were on the leaderboard. You can see XLE. So again, that's fine. These names can bounce. I don't own any of these areas. I got a couple of questions about them today. You know, we have our Q and A session on Monday and Wednesday for members, and I try to answer as many questions without being too snarky, um, which I was a little bit with some <laughs> with some questions today, but that's fine. <laughs> but that's fine. But yeah, so so let me get back on track. So yeah, so energy. You know, I think these groups can bounce. Right, they looked particularly weak at the end of the week, so I think that's good. We don't want to see a lot of groups really break down too much. Um, yeah, and to see the financials bounce, you know, where they kind of needed to, that's fine too, right? Um, you know, you could see that they're along this trend line. I think I've got this drawn, and I've got a trend line drawn here in one of these ETFs. I thought I drew that last week, but maybe I'm maybe I'm forgetting. But it looks like you do at this point. You could draw a trend line in here. Maybe I did that with the small caps, but yeah, I mean, doesn't that, so we've got a, we've got, um, you know, basically price is touching this trend line here a couple times. Whoops, let's put that here. We got a happy little trend line here. So we're bouncing off of this, right? And maybe at some point this is going to get to the 200 day moving average and kind of go in between. So that was today's price action. And again, it's good to see these things bounce and not break, even though I don't have big ownership in the banks or the energy companies um, because they are in downtrends and I'm a trend trader, right? So I just don't stick with downtrends, right? I look to play names that are breaking higher uh, over time. So what else performed pretty well? The industrials, right? Um, up 1.8% for the day. Um, also these special purpose vehicles, unbelievable. I don't really understand what this, what this is about. I also don't own any of these things. I just kind of watch a little bit because I don't, I really don't understand it <laughs> to be honest, but 32 to $40, like at this point with some of these names, right? You're just basically playing momentum, right? There was some commentary earlier about, you know, um, about Apple and Tesla and, you know, people are using these options for momentum vehicles. They're not buying calls in Apple and in Tesla because they're low risk, right? I heard this on TV earlier and I was literally shaking my head. That's not, that's not why people are playing short-term calls. In my opinion, they're playing short-term calls for momentum, right? They can ride profits you know, for, for an hour or for, for a couple hours during the day, they take off the weekly calls, they roll to a higher strike, maybe not this week, but next week. And they're playing momentum. They're using the options to play momentum. They're not using the options to play to, because there's limited risk, which you hear on TV. So I just wanted to clear that up. I hear incorrect stuff on the TV all the time. And every once in a while, I have to chime in when I see something really what I hear something wrong, especially about options. But in any event, it's kind of the same thing. There's a lot of things that have momentum. You know, why do these things go from 32 to 40, right? Because people are pressing, they're pressing, they're pressing the whole way up. They're buying more and more calls, right? So that, and then what they're doing is they're, they're substituting, right? There's a question about, you know, rolling out and up. It's a, it's a, very common thing in what we see in, in options, right? People buy short-term calls. They make the profits in the short-term calls. They take the profits out and they reestablish a small investment. So they're constantly adding back, adding back and adding back because they're basically growing. They're using options to, to play momentum and to grow their, their position and to make um, something that has momentum, make it into a really big winner. Right, that's how it's done in options. They're not buying options again because it's limit. Oh, it's limited risk. That's why they're doing it. Come on, <laughs> that's not. If you're not, if you think that way, then you don't understand how people are trading on the tape. So anyway, that's a little bit of why some of this occurs, is that people, you know, there are funds that are just pressing and pressing and pressing all day long. Right, they're establishing a call position. The it rips, they take it off, and what they do is they roll out and up. Um, sometimes, or they just roll to a higher strike, right? Once you do that, again, you're keeping some investment in place, but you're pulling your profits off the table a little bit, right? 
and then you make more money. You take the profits off the table again. You put your initial, you put your small investment back in place, right? That's basically how this can get going, right? Because I don't know. I, I don't know the news on these particular names. So let me get back to the trading, but I think these things are kind of interesting. Let me just talk about one other thing that doesn't fit, and then we'll talk about some of our trades. Um, but yeah, biotech kind of has me, you know, there's always something I'm concerned about. Last week I was concerned about, you know, if market breath started to break lower this is kind of interesting i'm not really sure what's going on with the with the bios um there was some call activity today in the biotechs but for me i like to tell you a little bit about my trading system in these videos just be just because i see call action on the tape that's that's not a reason for me just to buy i have to have something else for me the technicals outweigh the little little bits and pieces of call activity on the tape in xbi right this is breaking below value it's uh you got several sell signals here so number one it's breaking below value that's one signal number two price is now below the 50-day moving average the 20-day moving average so you could just chalk that up as one as another sell signal so now you got two sell signals the third sell signal is you got the you got the the faster moving average which is the 20-day is breaking below the 50-day moving average kind of sort of that's starting to happen so that's three sell signals so no way no chance am i gonna am i gonna follow some little call buyer on the tape when i see that there's three sell signals now we'll have to keep an eye on this um, to see what's happening here because um, biotech seems like it's taking the brunt um, and that's the higher beta um, if you look at ibb that also looks weak but remember the difference between ibb and xbi is IBB is larger cap, right? It's a market cap weighted ETF versus XBI is equally weighted. All right, next. And then if you also look at healthcare, right? That kind of has failed to get higher. I was actually looking for a breakout in healthcare. We didn't get it. Um, also, IHI is on the cusp of a breakout and is stalling here a little bit too. So, you know, A, they, they may need some more time um, and we'll see if this dip gets bought in biotech. If not, um, I think this would be a better place to, you know, buy the dip a little bit if we get down here to 104. So I think that's that's kind of interesting. All right, let's let me talk about my trades a little bit today, um, you know, and, and basically talking about how to trade this market a little bit. Right. A lot of strength. Whenever I see a gap open, a gap up. Right. When I went to bed last night, the market, you know, S&P Q's IWM was up about 20 basis points, you know, 0.2. When I woke up this morning, they're almost up one percent. Now Europe was really strong and kind of helped that. But whenever I see something like that, I'm taking profits in the first, you know, thirty minutes, and I'm doing some management with some trades. You know, Baba was a trade that we got into last week. Um, out of this Baba trade for nineteen dollars, paid thirteen on Friday. Um, also a couple other targets. So I rolled this Baba into. So again, I'm kind of doing what I talked about. I'm letting when I have a winner. Um, what I'm doing is taking some of the investment off the table. I'm taking my profits, putting them in my pocket, and I'm still looking to see if this thing could rip higher, right? That's how the professionals trade, right? When something looks good, you don't want to just get out of the trade on first sight. Um, now, again, I don't know if Bob is going to have continuation, but I know this is a lot of consolidation and a move higher. So, you know, I'm looking for a move up to 285, right? So I want to stay in this trade, but at the same point, I'm in options, which are volatile, right? People say limited risk, but there's a lot of risk in options, right? They're more volatile than a stock is. So again, the, when you hear something like that, uh, you know, you kind of have to just throw that out the window when somebody says limited risk, right? There's a lot of risk in options. They move faster than stock. Um, so you have to manage it a little bit, right? Because if it doesn't work and it returns, I don't want to lose all my profits, right? So when I roll it to a higher strike, right, I'm, ta I'm automatically taking some money out of the trade, right? I just took $6 out of this trade, right? And I put this on for smaller size. Um, again, it's an important concept if you're trading options. Um, Visa. Uh, this is a trade that we talked about last week. It's continuing to work. I'm still, you know, I'm taking targets, but I'm still holding some in this one. KWeb worked. Um, Autodesk, I basically started to see this rotation, you know, out of some of the, the high growth. So I may have cut this one a little bit short. They report earnings tomorrow. I like the pattern here, so I might trade this one for earnings. But again, this was a name that we, that we made uh, money on last week. 
and I rolled it into a higher strike. So again, you know, this is, you know, important, this management stuff, right? So I was originally in the 250 strike uh, and took this off for $10, paid $770 um, for a net price. And then I got out of the 250 calls and got into the 255 calls. So again, I'm making money as this, you know, and I'm staying in the option trade while I'm while I am limiting my risk because I'm I'm taking some money off the table. All right, it's a very important concept. Amazon, I got out of the Amazon weekly call spread that I put on on Friday. Again, I just saw that there was a, there could be some rotation on the tape, so I was quick. Right, that's what you want to do. You want to, in my opinion, right. And this video is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. But selling into selling into strength is basically what I want to be doing. Right, um, I want to be selling the rips and then be patient, wait for some dips, or or try to play some of the under owned names that are suddenly, you know, showing up on my radar that are having momentum. So I did this with JP Morgan. I was a little bit too quick in this trade. Um, I've got put this thing on for 244, uh, got out of it at what 290 or something like that. I try to play a little bit of the CCL, but um, I just can't stay in these uh, these travel names for very long. Um, instead, what I did was, you know, so I got out of my last portion of JP Morgan. I tried a little bit of VFC. We saw a weekly call buyer in this thing, and I got out of this one. So again, taking my money and running with something that I have low conviction in. Right? If I have low conviction in, I'm happy to just take the take the money and run. Um, and I did that with um, uh, I took one one target in CCL and took the balance off. All right, for the um, for this particular trade. Uh, da, 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 da. And then um, XLE, right? I know that the, you know Boeing acted very well today. I, I have just a tough time holding. I have low conviction in Boeing as well. I just can't can't own Boeing um, for you know more than a couple days because it has too many problems. So what do I like to do instead? Um, I like to go with something stronger here, and that's the industrials. You could also draw a trend line in here too, but it looks a little bit better than the. Um, you know, it looks a little bit better than the financials. Let's see, this is going to be close uh, to hitting all these points here. So again, I think this looks pretty good with the industrials, um, and I'm playing that. I'm also playing a little bit of Starbucks, which I took uh, a target in. This thing has to break outside of value, right? So it's got to break above 78.60, which it did here on the close, right? Um, and so someone asked earlier, right? So this was a really good question. I think I covered all most of my trades here. Um, Neo, I got completely out of, right? So, so look at all the profits I'm taking here, right? As the market rips, someone, um, you know, asked me, and again, my job for, you know, I think my process, my job, my job is to follow my process, but we don't know when this trend is going to, going to end, right? We've been making money all the way through this, right? And if I've, you know. And if I said, you know, if I was going to try to time the market top, right, and, and time it here or here or here, then, then I would be losing out on this whole swing higher that we've had now for months, right? So I don't know when this trend is going to last, when, when this trend is, is going to end, right? And I'm not going to guess when it's going to end. What will happen is it will eventually end and I'll lose a little bit money on the top. Right. If if you get your if you get yourself comfortable with this, that you're going to make a lot of money on this, and then maybe give back a little bit on the absolute top, you become comfortable with it. Right. So you know, let's say they're talking round numbers. Right. If you could make a hundred thousand dollars holding through this, but lose five thousand on the very last tippy top of it, wouldn't you want to do that particular you know run or or trade? Um, I think you would. So I get all these questions about, hey, should I buy puts here? Da 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 da. Well, there's there's no sell signal. Right? We know that the put call ratio has been really low. We know that the sentiment is really hot, but we're not. But bottom line for me is price and trend. Right. So yes, we're extended here. So what what do I do? You know, when we're when we have a really strong day, I take a lot of money off. I take some money off the table. Right. And I've been doing that for the last you know couple days. And then you wait for a little bit of a pullback. Right. How great was that pullback that we saw last week? 
right? It was a mini, it was, it was a baby pullback, right? But, but it was so much fun to kind of play this. So I think we're a little bit extended here in the short term. And, and I still have trades on to participate. Um, I'll, well, I will always do that because I'm sticking with the trend, but I make adjustments as we go along. So there should be no reason, like I, I hear everyone once in a while, like, you know, hey, this is going to end badly. This doesn't seem right. This is where you make your money when, <laughs> when things go really unusual like this. So it's tough to stick with the trend. Um, and then you make adjustments. If you're starting to feel, if you're starting to sweat and say, hey, this shouldn't be happening. This is going up too much. You take some money off the table, right? Just like we talked about with some of the other trades, the option trades, right? If you're constantly pulling that money off the table, right, you're assuring yourself that you're not going to lose as much when the market does, you know, correct a little bit. And it becomes very fun when you get a little bit of a pullback because that entices people who haven't been involved to get involved, right? So that's how we've been doing it, rinse and repeat. And um, this has been a lot of fun, you know, and, and today was such a nice relaxed day for me because, you know, I'm putting myself in a good position, right? I'm not pressing, I'm not buying strength, I'm selling into it, and then I wait and I be a little bit patient, and then I look for things like this, the JP Morgan and the XLI, some things that haven't performed. Am I going big size in these in these trades? No, because I, I view them, some of them as they can rally for a couple for a couple days or hopefully a few days, and then they seem to stall out. So you have to be careful of those. All right, guys, I think that's enough for today. Have a great night, everybody. Awesome day. And um, I'll tell you, for, for an August, knock on wood, this has, been, uh, this has been a very easy August so far. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.